Hi YouTube, this is Paul and Alex back to do our fifth video of our MTG 101 series. Uh, this video concerns abilities of creatures. We're going to talk to you today about triggered abilities, activated abilities, and static abilities. First we have triggered abilities. Uh, one such example is the card Blightcaster. Uh, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you may have target creature get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Uh, so when it... Uh, if I, this is out, yeah. and you... So we've talked about card types, right? So if you've watched that video first, you'll know that there are two types of enchantments. An enchantment that just goes on the field and an aura. So this card says whenever you cast an enchantment, which counts as either an aura or just a regular enchantment, Whenever you cast that enchantment, this effect goes on the stack, and it resolves. So if my opponent had a 1-1 creature, and then I played Ephara's Radiance, played an enchantment, Gideon's Lawkeeper, a 1-1, would get minus 2, minus 2, its toughness would be reduced to 0, and it would, it die. would die. Triggered, whenever you see, whenever, it's a That's trigger. a trigger. That's a trigger. That can be... Or it could be, at the beginning of your upkeep, do this. Yeah. It's whenever some state of the game happens where it triggers an effect. Alright. Next we have activated abilities. Like this Alabaster Mage. Where you can pay one and a colorless to give target creature you control lifelink until end of turn. So, as long as you have mana, you can pay that as many times as you want as an instant. This is called an activated ability as opposed to the Blightcaster's triggered ability because you actively have to pay a cost to do it. That's any time you're confused about how abilities work between the two, if you have to pay for it, whether that's paying mana, as in the case of Gideon's Lawkeeper, t paying mana and tapping the creature, or sacrificing a creature like we showed with uh, Cartel Aristocrats in a previous video, Anytime you have to pay a cost like that, it's an activated ability. Yeah. And pain can any be, be anything from uh, sacking a creature, sacking a land, paying mana, tapping, or just tapping, or some combination thereof. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. The last type of creature ability we have is what's called a static ability. A static ability is something that just... It just is. It the just creature is. has whatever it says on the card. 100% of the time, unless something takes it away, uh, this creature will have this. Most of the times, uh, they just affect combat, but certain, uh, certain static abilities change other things. I'll show you one of the ones first that affects something outside of combat. So this is Sacred Wolf. It's a 3-drop, three 3-1. Three and it says it has, if the camera will focus, Hexproof. Hexproof is an ability that says your opponent cannot target this creature with any spell they control. Actually, we could just show it right here. Oh, that's a probably a good idea. Uh, this creature can't be target of spells or abilities your opponent control. That so means you can do something to it, but your opponent cannot. Right, so this is very, very useful. Because there's a lot of kill spells and burn spells, which will do damage to stuff to kill it. Now, a Sacred Wolf is probably going to say, ha, 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 you can't touch me. Yep. So, that's definitely useful. Uh, we're going to show you pretty much all the static abilities. There are for regular sets. Uh, we, here we have Giant Spider, whose ability is Reach. This creature can block creatures with flying. Uh, Here, I have the flyer. We'll explain that next. We'll explain what reach and flying This is Seacoast Drake. It's a 2-drop, 1-3 flyer. Flying means that if you control Seacoast Drake and say your opponent controls Get it, Alabaster, Alabaster Mage. Mage, Alabaster Mage does not have flying. Therefore, if you wish to attack your opponent with a flyer and your opponent doesn't have a flyer, that damage goes straight through. It just flies, it flies over. over. Exactly. Now, reach, in this case, kind of is like it's it says. And for the most part, you can act. Reach is actually pretty flavorful in that 
when you think of things that fly, you might think of like insects or something. A lot of the reach, the things that have reach, are spiders or other insects that make webs. So you would think so they catch this thing flyers. is flying and gets caught. Yeah. So yeah, or it just has it's really big and has a ton of reach. So. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's flavorful. It, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Uh, next, we have an interesting one called Defender. Now, Defender means you can never attack. All you can do is block with it, or if it has a tab ability or another ability, do that. But uh, Defenders generally have really, really high toughness. Yeah. So, Or they have some ability that makes combat not nearly as good as it normally would be. For your opponent, anyway. Yeah, for your opponent. So, Defenders are Defenders. Makes yep. sense. So here's one where it applies not only in combat, but in other aspects as well, mm. if we're going to talk about that. We should. This is Typhoid Rat. It's a one black, one one. Death Touch. Death Touch says, any amount of damage this deals to a creature is enough to destroy it. So let's say this creature attacked. Let's say Giant Spider blocked. Since it deals one damage, and any amount of damage it deals is enough to kill it, both creatures would die in that case. So even though Typhoid Rats is a 1-1, one, one, you could go up against it and a million, a million. And it would still kill it. And the Typhoid Rats would still kill it. So it's a very useful ability. And now, it's not, sorry, uh, go ahead. It's not just combat. If you were to give a, like, say, enchant it with something that would allow it to do damage. Sure. Uh, like, say, something gave it the ability to tap, do one damage to target creature. That would kill it, too. Yes. Also, there's a mechanic called fighting in the game. Fighting says that you can play a card. It says target creature fights target creature. They deal damage to each other equal to their power. It's like combat outside of the combat phase. Since they do damage to each other and Death Touch is still applying to Typhoid Rats, it would still kill the giant spider in that case. Right. Uh, Semi-related... We have what's called lifelink, like this child of night. Uh, for lifelink, damage dealt by this creature also causes you to gain that much life. So, like typhoid rats, anytime it does damage, whether that's in combat or out of combat, uh, basically you're going to get life back equal to its power. Here we have a mechanic called intimidate. Now, intimidate like this four-drop blade tusk boar, uh, is a very interesting mechanic because it can only be blocked by creatures of the same color. So say that my opponent has a battle herda. It's a 3-3 three, three first strike for five. Since my opponent doesn't have a red creature, if I attack, it intimidates us down and hits. However... If, say, my opponent had a Lightning Elemental, which is a 4-1 Haste for 4, then it could block. You can't intimidate The other your own thing that, your can own it, that can block something that has Intimidate is an Artifact Creature. Right. Those can also do it, because they have no color. Yeah. Usually. But we digress. Yeah. Uh, now uh, that we're... since we're talking about things that have to do with, like, yeah, fine, whatever. This is Lightning Elemental, which we just showed you. It has a thing called Haste. Usually there's a thing called Summoning Sickness that affects creatures when they enter the battlefield. If a creature has Haste, they can use tap abilities or attack on the turn they're played. Right, but usually if I play a creature... I have to wait an entire turn until my upkeep yep. to either tap it for, or a tap ability or to attack. Yep. So a haster, I mean, it's pacey. Yeah. Uh, that's all it's I can fast. say. It's fast. It's fast. So uh, most of the creatures that are, have haste are red creatures because it's kind of the yeah. hit someone in the face color. Yep. So that's where you see it most. Here's another thing, another creature that has to do with combat. This is Keymaster Rogue. It's a four drop, three two. This card says that Keymaster Rogue is unblockable. That is exactly <laughs> what it sounds like. It cannot be blocked. And it's important to note here that 
uh, M14, when that came out last year, around this time in July, that they eroded every card that said unblockable to can't be blocked. That's a rules issue. We won't go into it. Just know that they're the same thing. Yeah. Though there are still some, like, instance or sorcery that set, might say, like, creatures you control can't be blocked this turn, and that's not unblockable. Yeah. So, you, you'll have to look up the rules for stuff like that, but generally... if you Generally, see, it's the same yeah. thing. If you see a card that says... If it's says, on a creature, it's the same thing. Yeah. So, I love Unblockable. That's probably my favorite. <laughs> but Yeah. Uh, we. This is a mechanic we talked about in our combat video, Trample. So, it just tramples over stuff. So, excess power over the defending creature's toughness... Damage is, done to the opposing player. Is damage done to the opposing player. So, Trample... So, Okay. There you go. This is Sarah Angel. It's a 5 drop, 4-4, four, four, flyer. But it also has this ability called Vigilance. Vigilance means that attacking with this creature doesn't cause it to tap like it normally would. So if you're trying to attack the opposing player, you just go, this creature has Vigilance, I attack you for 4. Yeah. So, yeah. Most other creatures, you have to tap it. When you're tapped, you can't block. Yeah. So this essentially means that you can attack with it and block with it, unless your opponent has stuff to tap it down. Sure. But uh, Vigilance is definitely a very powerful mechanic, especially like in draft. It's ridiculous. Oh, that's great in draft. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't find a creature for this next ability, but we'll talk about it anyway. Lots of creatures, or not a lot, but some creatures will have this ability called Indestructible. Indestructible is an ability that says or that means it can't be destroyed. That means it can't be destroyed by damage dealt to it and it can't be destroyed by kill spells that say destroy target creature or, or something of the some, sort. Or like blanket destroys like destroy all permanents or whatever. Yeah, you can. Be. Oh no, you can't. Sorry. You can't. No, you're right. So, uh, indestructible. So board wipes do not work against it. Yeah, the only thing that really works against an indestructible creature is either bouncing it back to someone's hand or exiling, exiling it. it. Yeah. But, uh... Those last two mind. things, board wipes and exiling, we're going to talk about in a later video. Uh, in our miscellaneous yeah. items video. Uh, for our... Oh, let's do There's that one next. more. Or two more. This is Cudgel Troll. It's a four drop, four three. It has this ability that says regenerate Cudgel Troll. We chose to put this in static abilities because it's such a common ability. So regenerate means that the next time it would die this turn or be destroyed, it's not destroyed. Instead, you tap it and remove all damage from it. Right. So this just allows you to attack much more safely, granted that you have whatever cost you have to pay. Or if it's being targeted by a kill spell, you could say, I regenerate it. Right. Though some kill spells say, it can't, can't be regenerated, can't be regenerated. but, but yeah. it, it's still but, useful. Yeah, you get it. Okay. The next thing that we have is protection. Here we have Lavinia of the 10th. She's a 5-drop 4-4 four, four, with protection from red. So there's a cool acronym to use whenever you're thinking about protection, and it's debt, D-E-B-T. Uh, it cannot be dealt damage, it cannot be enchanted, it cannot be blocked, and it cannot be targeted, D-E-B-T. So By whatever it has protection from. Right, so Lavinia of the 10th has protection from red, so if my opponent, say, had something that could do five damage, like a red... Or four. Four or five damage... Uh, and, and could do that to Lavinia of the 10th with a, you know, a red spell that does that, it, it couldn't even target her because that's no. T of our D-E-B-T reminder. Uh, in the same way, a creature with protection from red couldn't be hit by, say... Couldn't be dealt damage. Yeah, by a red creature. In this case, a red-green creature, Fanatic of Xenagos. So, it's important to note here before we go any further, since we haven't talked a bunch about multicolored creatures, since Fanatic is both red and green, it would be affected by anything that counts for either of those. In right. this case, it is red. She is pro-red. It cannot deal damage to her right. because it is red. I mean, that's just a general rule of magic, too. If, you have, if there's ever something that's two or more things, 
it's counted as each one of those and not separately. Yeah. So, anyways. But say Fanatic of Xenagos attacked, Lavinia of the 10th could block, and not any of the three power would be done to her toughness. It's just essentially negated. Yeah. Uh, however, protection does not give protection from trample damage. So say Fanatic of Xenagos attacks, and then the person puts plays uh, Dauntless Onslaught, giving it plus two, plus two. It becomes a five, five. Even if Linea, Lavinia of the Tenth blocks, the one power in excess here, of its fourth here, I'll toughness. I'll explain this pretty simply. This is a five-five. You don't want to take five damage, so you block. This person, because or this creature and this player, must deal four damage to her, because trample counts anything that would kill a creature, and the rest can go to the opposing player. Right. So since it's a 5-5, five, five, I would have to do 4 to her and 1 to the opposing player if I was attacking with this fanatic. Now, assigning damage doesn't mean that the damage is dealt. That's important to note. So Lavinia would still survive. So would the fanatic in this case. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so that's protection. But we have another thing with Lavinia that's important to note. Uh, she has an ability... Uh, in her second ability called Detain. It says Detain each non-land permanent. Now, Detain is one of the static abilities, or one of the abilities from the set. Uh, it's Return from Dragon's Maze. This card specifically is. This card's from the, Dragon's Maze. The, it's, from the, it's from Return to Ravnica. Right. Now, each set is going to have its different abilities. Uh, the ones that we've showed you up through Protection are the ones that you'll see just pretty much from set to set. Yeah. But, yeah, you're going to have to learn well, a whole I mean, bunch. Like, I'll just... Don't be intimidated by this list I'm about to give you. Return to Ravnica had Detain. It had Evolve. It had... Dredge. Dredge. No, it didn't. It had uh, Scavenge. Well, you said Evolve. That's not Return to Ravnica. That's, yeah, oh, that's Gatecrash. That's Gatecrash. Whatever. Right. The block, anyway. And then in Theros, and Theros block, there was Heroic. There was... Constellation. Constellation. There was Monstrous. There was Tribute, which that card has. So, once you've learned how to play Magic, which you should do with these first abilities, really, because it's simpler, once you get into the sets that they do throughout the year, they actually make it pretty easy for you to learn the new right. abilities. So. Uh, but you're probably, once you get more into Magic, you're going to be looking at sets from, you know, three, four, five, six years ago. Don't be intimidated by the scary words that you see, because generally a lot of the a lot of the abilities from set to set are like remixes of previous ones. So They try, the designers and, de and the developers try to make it easy for new players to learn it anyway we're just gonna do these two creatures together so this is battle herda it's a five drop three three first strike this is markov blade master it's a three drop one one double strike first strike and double strike are very very good they when I was first learning to play magic, I hated learning these abilities. We're gonna make it really simple right now. All right, so just bear with us, people. Just go stand over there. I'll make sure you're in camera. All right, cool. You good? No. Closer. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Whatever. Regular this, combat. This is first strike. Well, let's do regular first. Oh, okay, fine. This is regular combat between two creatures. I hit you. You hit me. At the same time. Simultaneous. Paul, you have first strike. Now, in this instant, regular first strike. I kill Alex. I'm dead. He's dead. Now, it could also be, I have first strike. I hit Alex. He's still alive. I survive. I hit you. Now let's try double strike. Paul, you have double strike. I kill you. I'm dead. Okay. Now in this next one, I'm going to have double strike, but I'm not going to be able to kill him. Double strike. And then we he hits again. 
Double strike literally means you hit twice. You hit tw twice, and the first one's a first strike. Yeah. So, it's pretty simple. Just for regular attacking, it's simultaneously. First strike, the creature with first strike does the damage first, and then there's a, essentially a pause. Uh, if the other creature survives, then it does the damage. With double strike, there's a first strike. And a regular. And then a regular, yeah. like a second regular simultaneous attack if the opposing creature survives. Yep. So, first strike, double strike, simple when you think of it like that. Okay, so, I hope to God that was everything having to do with abilities. <laughs> I think it was. Alright. Thanks for watching. Bye.